Now, you can use different detergents and different chemical treatment to remove components of the axonine. You will actually separate the microtubules in the axonine into single and double microtubules. So here we have axonine and an appropriate detergent, and we've broken it apart. And what do you see here? You see the single microtubules that would have been derived from the middle component of an axonine. And you see the doublets. And illustrated on these doublets are these are the dynein arms as well. If you dialyze this preparation to remove the t detergents and chemicals which had disrupted the microtubule structure of the axoneme, the microtubules will re-aggregate, not into an axoneme, but into a sheet of doublet shown here. The uh, single microtubules don't have the capacity to associate with one another because they have nothing that allows them to bind. On the other hand, the doublets with their dynein arms, uh, which would account for sliding of one doublet against another, would have to bind the, the doublets to one another at least at some point. So you can explain the production of this sheet if you, by removing the detergent. Now, if you add ATP to this stuff, they come apart again. Let's take a look at how they come apart. We know that they come apart because when you add ATP, the ATP will be hydrolyzed and the microtubule doublet will actually slide past one another like this. And I'll show you that again. They slide past one another and they come apart. How do we know this? If we added just added ATP, we would watch it get hydrolyzed and a couple of seconds later we'd look in the electron microscope and we would see all these individual doublets and we would say, oh, we added ATP, the microtubule doublet sheet comes apart. But it comes apart by sliding and we know that. Uh, there are actually electron microscope pictures which I wasn't able to find in time for this presentation, but I'm showing you a cartoon that is very much what the electron micrograph would show. Add ATP and if you stop the action almost as soon as you add the ATP, you can see microtubules that have walked along one another but have not yet dissociated. And so you can imagine that if you allowed that to continue, the microtubules that are walking along one another would reach the end of the microtubule that they're walking on and would fall off. And so you would get this uh, tube full of dissociated individual doublet. But you can see in the electron microscope a partially disassembled or dissociated sheet of microtubules that you formed in the way I described if you stop the action almost immediately after you add the ATP. This is what led to the sliding microtubule mechanism to explain how microtubules enable cilia or flagella to move. So here we have just a pair of doublets with the dynein arms linking them. And if you just imagine one of the doublets moving along the other, movement is restricted, for example, by linking proteins. If the microtubule on the right is extended upwards, the effect will be to bend the entire structure. And now you just have to imagine that in the 9 plus 2 array of microtubules in cilia and flagella, that the beat of a cilium or of a flagellum is going to be based on alternately walking a microtubule on one side of the 9 plus 2 or walking of microtubules on the other side. Now, the question at the bottom is something for you to think about. We use detergents at various steps. In one case, we use detergents to strip the cell membrane off of the flagellum or the cilium and reveal the axoneme. So that axoneme is a basic a, uh, a flagellum without a membrane. We then use chemical treatments to cause the axoneme microtubules to come apart. So the question is, we have introduced some new components here. What do you think some of these detergents are doing to the axoneme? 